is not so much that is known about the air traffic controllers and the air traffic controllers are the ones that are responsible for making sure that the aircraft and its occupants at all time are safe mm -hmm. whilst the pilot is just responsible and today on Game Changers, we delve into the world of air traffic control and we'll be uh, gaining some very unique insights into the critical role that air traffic controllers play in ensuring the safety and efficiency of, uh, of our skies, whether you are an aviation enthusiast or simply curious about the inner workings uh, of our airspace. This is an interview you do not want to miss out on right now. So joining me in studio is George Matruas, the Senior Manager for Promotion Quality at the Namibia Civil Aviation Authority uh, for more on this discussion. So let's welcome him to 99FM. Good afternoon, George, and uh, thank you for joining us here on 99FM. Thank you, Trish, for having me. It is a huge pleasure to have you, George. Let's get straight into it. Give us a, a brief background of the Namibia Civil Aviation Authority for those of us who do not know exactly what your mandate is. Okay, the Namibia Civil Aviation Authority was established uh, through the Act uh, of Parliament in 2016. And uh, we are basically responsible for making sure that the laws are creating that as governing the aviation industry. So we are the ones that are responsible for overseeing. So in essence, what you can say is that, uh, that we are like the roads authority for the layman mm -hmm. on the street uh, that does not know what it is. Uh, that is responsible for making sure that the laws are created and also we do an oversight function over this. Mm -hmm. And uh, in addition to that, we also have a, a, a service provisioning arm where we are providing the air traffic control services. So not only are we a regulator, but also a service provider at the same time. At the same time. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about the traffic controllers. Can you explain what exactly a traffic controller does? Okay, an air traffic controller, yes, it's one of those uh, industries or those professions that a lot is not known about. Because mm -hmm. when you look at an aircraft, for instance, you see there's an aircraft and a pilot in it. Yes. But uh, a lot of people see only that side. But in the background, there is not so much that is known about the air traffic controllers. And the air traffic controllers are the ones that are responsible for making sure that the aircraft and its occupants at all time are safe. Mm -hmm. Whilst the pilot is just responsible for its occupants in that aircraft itself, the air traffic controller makes sure that each and every aircraft that is operating in the air is safe. Mm -hmm. So what happens is they give instructions and clearances and directions to, to aircraft, uh, to the pilots, and tell them how and where to fly, where, what is safe, what is uh, any possible uh, dangers that might be in the air, so that they can avoid this. And uh, we have ways and means of doing this. And uh, we do a lot of, uh, of training, a lot of coordination, a lot of of talking a lot of uh, calculations that is happening and and just to mention that air traffic control is one of uh, the most stressful works Can you in, in the world uh, mm -hmm. top five uh, even close to a president. Yes, that's yes. crazy. No, I can imagine how stressful it can be because, like you mentioned, they they allow uh, and inform the pilots and you know the folks in the air if there's maybe bad weather somewhere, things like that. Uh, in terms of that, do you also do they also? Um, you know, they obviously know how many aircrafts are in the air yeah. as well, and also unauthorized um, flights and things like that. It also gets controlled. Yes, uh, you have to realize that technology has moved on a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, in the past, probably 20, 30 years uh, back, you would have had aircraft that might have been sneaking in and out without being, being seen. But now, uh, Namibia has actually even moved on, and we do have a radar system that can detect most of these aircraft. And on top of that, it is the responsibility of the pilot because you are trained in such a way that you have to maintain that responsibility. Mm. Because if you are not known, the likelihood is that you might fly into somebody else. Yes. So for you to be able to maintain that separation from other aircraft, you must be known so that you must get that service. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's very important. And uh, there is, uh, the chances are very rare and very slim for an, an aircraft to be flying unauthorized mm -hmm. into the Namibian airspace. Okay. So that is uh, one of the things. So we make sure that everybody gets uh, that uh, informed 
decision when they are flying into Namibia. When they're flying into yeah. Namibia. You mentioned that, you know, it, it is a job that is, you mentioned five top most stressful jobs in the world. What are some of the common challenges uh, faced by, by air traffic controllers, George? Okay, uh, let me just draw a, a comparison between an air traffic controller mm -hmm. and a pilot, uh, mm -hmm. and, a, and a doctor, for instance. A doctor will be able to make a mistake mm -hmm. and, and, and fix that. However, for an air traffic controller, if he makes that uh, mistake, a miscalculation, for instance, it can be catastrophic. That is how bad it is. And a doctor uh, can are likely to maybe, if he makes a mistake, are likely, and God forbid, only able to kill one person. However, an air traffic controller, if he makes that mistake, mm. is carrying the responsibility of this aircraft, its occupants, and the people on the ground, on the ground. and the, the uh, infrastructure that is on the ground. That mm. is how big a responsibility is that an aircraft uh, air traffic controller is carrying. So you have to just compare the two, just to have an understanding of the stress level that an air traffic controller has to carry in making sure that these day-to-day -day operations are maintained to the optimum. To the optimum. Yes. So that means that training must be very vigorous then. How often do they undergo training um, as technology evolves? You mentioned, you know, we have m new technologies that, that's come out now. So how often do they undergo training, uh, especially with the evolution? of technology yes uh, air traffic control or the aviation industry is one of those industries that is continuously evolving mm -hmm. so it is very important that an air traffic controller must be at all times be current and be trained at a new technology that is coming up as you know the IT system that we heavily rely on as air traffic controller is something that is evolving today you know uh, today you are doing something else and then AI moves in yes. and then something else must be coming up so we have to come up with some and we have to keep abreast of what is happening in the industry so that is very important so it depends on 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 the uh, the industry or not the industry but uh, the size of, of of the air traffic system that you are operating mm -hmm. in that you have to be to trained in if you are operating in an airport that is or the airspace that is a very very small and uh, that is not very busy then obviously the training needs might not be that much because you might do with what you have mm -hmm. however in an environment like Eros airport for instance or the Hostia Kutauke environment Wafish Bay, for instance, that uh, that is a very fast-paced. You need to be trained at a regular basis, and that will be depending on 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 the systems that they have in place. That can be something like from three months to six months uh, to to a year. So that's how regular they have the to training be has to be and, and, and yeah yeah if you're just tuning in right now we're joined in studio by george matuas uh, the senior manager for promotion quality at the namibia civil aviation authority we're learning everything we need to know about the roles that air traffic controllers play and if you are listening right now and maybe you want to go study uh, to become an air traffic controller yourself we are going to continue our discussion with george right after the song it's sky goes what's love got to do with it on 99 fm <laughs> Kygo with uh, Tina Turner. What's love got to do with it? You locked into your inspiration station, 99 FM. My name is Treza, and we're currently so busy uh, with our conversation on our Game Changers segment, learning everything you need to know about the aviation industry, uh, what air traffic controllers go through on a daily to make sure that we're safe uh, in our airspace. And we're joined in studio by George Matruas. He is uh, the Senior Manager for Promotion Quality at the Namibia Civil Aviation Authority, and he is giving us all the details especially right now if you're thinking about studying to become an air traffic controller he's going to give us the details right now so george yes you um let me first ask you how long have you been in the industry oh 20 plus 20 yes. plus years yeah. and you knew from the bat that this is what you wanted to do uh, no um when i started uh, being an air traffic controller i did not know anything about aviation mm -hmm. neither did was i exposed to an aircraft or uh, an airport for that matter because you know uh, the history of Namibia mm. dictates that uh, as a previously uh, a disadvantaged uh, youth from Karatura, you never had that privilege mm. of understanding or knowing aviation. However, I was privileged enough that uh, 
I saw it in the newspaper and then I said, okay, fine, let me try out this and see where it takes me. Did mm. the, the aptitude test, uh, did uh, uh, the interview and was fortunate enough and uh, went and studied in mm. Germany. And, and the rest is history. And the rest is history, yes. <laughs> I love that. So, George, let's say, you know, times have changed. You know, there are now more opportunities out there, uh, you know, for individuals who are interested in this, in a career in, in aviation. So, so for, for Namibia, for example, if I'm a student studying right now, I want to, you know, study to become an air traffic uh, controller. What subjects and courses should one take if I'm interested in becoming an air traffic controller? Okay, uh, air traffic controller of the demand in terms of mathematics and mm. your English yes. it is very important that you have to have that kind of a background so when you are in, in grade 10 already I think you should already be aspiring to learn more about physics mm. uh, English and as well as mathematics if you are very good at that you know in the past C was enough mm. but now with the competition that is very, yes, very, very stringent. I think that you should not uh, limit yourself to an average uh, symbol, but to be the highest. Because when we select the air traffic controllers that uh, we want, uh, or the students that want to become air traffic controllers, we pick the, the cream of the crop. Mm. I'm telling you, we pick the best. Mm. So uh, you will be fortunate enough. What we do is, uh, as the Civil Aviation Authority of Namibia, we uh, always have scholarships that are available. It's, uh, I'm not so sure how, how often we do that, but it's on a regular basis so that uh, we select uh, the students and then they are sent to, to various international schools because we don't have one. However, Namibia is planning to have a, a center of excellence soon, so we might be able to provide uh, the training locally. But uh, mostly we send our staff uh, to the South African uh, Civil Aviation Authority, ATNS, where they get trained. Mm -hmm. And once they get, uh, once they're done with that, uh, they come back and they become air traffic controllers. Not necessarily air traffic controllers at first, but uh, they have to go through on-the-job training and mm. uh, then they become aerodrome controllers. And once they're done with the aerodrome control part, uh, then uh, they progress into approach, which is a smaller airspace. An aerodrome controller is the one that is responsible for the airport mm -hmm. traffic. But an approach controller has got a certain radius of aircraft that he has to control. And then the area control, which is uh, the whole country itself. So we have uh, different uh, dimensions of air traffic control as well. And uh, that's how you also progress. In other countries, you specialize into one area. Mm -hmm was in Namibia because of uh, the amount of traffic that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, we currently don't have a specialization. However, in future, that is something that we might be looking at. But looking well. at. Yeah. Let's talk about, you know, opportunities um, available in the country. If, like you said, you know, you send me out to go get the training and I come back. Are there job opportunities for Africa, uh, air traffic controllers in the country? Yes. Mm -hmm because people are obviously retiring on a regular basis uh, and uh, people are also dying. So we consti continuously have to fill that pool of air traffic controllers. And also, uh, uh, as the economy progresses in the country, more and more air traffic uh, 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 airlines come and join the industry so that's why it's very important that we have to increase the capacity of the air traffic controllers and also the as I said the economy uh, improves that's why there's a need for continuously uh, opening new airports and that is uh, sort of creating also Chops. air traffic controllers yeah mm -hmm. and some of the air traffic controllers at uh, reach a certain age uh, and and move towards administrative uh, responsibilities like myself uh, so that uh, has to be continuously filled so we have we need a continuous stream of of new air traffic controllers and so especially young minds yes is there an age limit um, if um, is there a specific age limit if I want to you know work in the in the aviation uh, uh, industry no okay we don't have an age limit but you have to if you have to go into a contract obviously in a state uh, like namibia you have to be a certain age and mm. that's the only requirement uh, that you have but other than that there's no age limit however uh, it's always best to recruit young uh, 
staffers so that they can remain active for a longer period. It does not really help us to recruit a 30-year-old yes. certain person on training and then that person after 10 years or 20 years has to, to retire. retire mm. That makes sense. Really, yeah. It does make yeah. sense. George, before we let you go, um, what are some of the ultimate aims and, and, and some of the objectives um, of the aviation industry for traffic controllers in Namibia uh, moving forward? What we want to do with air traffic controllers is uh, we want uh, to, to sensitize the, uh, the people on the streets uh, to get to know the industry, especially the, the kids uh, mm. on, in the rural places, because that is where we can also draw from, because we don't want uh, air traffic control not only to be available to the people in the urban areas, but also to the rural areas. We want to expose a lot of uh, uh, these activities of the Namibia Civil Aviation Authority, and most people do not know the Namibia Civil Aviation Authority. So this is also part of our responsibility to make sure that people get to know because at the end of the day, we are a public entity. You are the taxpayer. You have mm. the responsibility to get to know and to interrogate what our responsibilities are to make sure that when you board a plane, that you know that uh, the, air, the Civil Aviation Authority is doing its worth to make sure that um, my destination is guaranteed. I am guaranteed to reach my destination. Mm. And also to make sure that uh, we uh, make sure that the tourism industry blossoms in the country. So that is one of the aims that we have as an industry or the Civil Aviation Authority to promote the aviation industry and make sure that it becomes one day cheap for everybody. Mm, I love that. No, I definitely learned uh, uh, a whole lot about uh, the uh, air traffic controllers today. So thank you so much, George, for making the time to come chat with us and just sharing, you know, what uh, the Namibia Civil Aviation Authority is all about. Thank you so much. 99 FM's Game Changers was brought to you by Ventuglaga. Now is the perfect time to leave your mark with the perfect beer.